Okay, and here we are. It is 65 degrees outside, uh, so being a fall in here. Uh, it's uh, 5.49, it's exactly 40 minutes after the last video. And it is 75 degrees in here. And that 75 degrees is because of that. So I've already boiled one pot of water uh, to do my dishes. And you can see there's a little bit of steam coming off there. Uh, so that's got a nice temperature to it. I got a little bit of soap in that. Um, I decided to clean my coffee maker uh, and my spoons and my spatula and what else, uh, whatever I need to clean here. I've got some coffee water on the cook right now and uh, I'm going to make my basic breakfast. And my basic breakfast is something that I've told everybody that I was going to make about a year ago and show everybody how it is I will make this. Uh, this can be made as a backpacking meal with dehydrated kidney beans. I don't do interruptions, no anything like that. So I've got kidney beans out of a bag or out of a container. You can find dehydrated kidney beans, pinto beans, I mean any type of beans that you want, but this is protein. Okay. This is protein, but this has also uh, got some iron and some other stuff in it. So, I basically, if I eat a good portion of this in the morning, I'm usually not hungry till late at night. And if I do eat late at night, then I'm snacking. Uh, of course, if I'm on the trail, this isn't going to be breakfast. Uh, this is going to be more like lunch. I do light. Sometimes I don't even eat in the mornings, to be perfectly honest with you. Um... For those of you who do backpacking and do long-term backpacking, hiking trips and things like that, you know, your hunger your hunger changes. Uh, but I've actually been in the situation to where I actually gained weight on a trail uh, for various reasons. And of course, if you're doing, you know, social backpacking or you're doing backcountry stuff, um, I'm basically just going to shut up and, and do what I do here in the morning. So... I'll give you a list of ingredients in the beginning of it before I go into making my coffee, but I'm going to start with the coffee, and then I'll move on to cooking, and I'll talk about uh, how I wash and how I clean up things. So I'm doing a separate uh, with, um, I don't know, overall, uh, uh, overall knowledge of not necessarily just sticking to a criteria of van life, but looking at the knowledge that I have about backpacking and, and, and batching or bachelor living as, as long as I have. Um, you know, the married life is a bit different. It's not much different than the step van, except for there's more space, <laughs> to be honest with you. And you're a bit more tired, and there's a bit more work involved in things of that nature. And of course, instead of providing for one, you're providing for two, uh, unless the two of you are uh, making the income. So, I have butter. Uh, this is Blue Bonnet salted butter. This is the creamy stuff. And then I have one uh, chicken egg. You can use duck egg, goose egg. I have uh, potatoes and thick cut bacon down here at the bottom. I think it's corn king bacon, so it's got that corn flavor, so it's uh, corn fed hogs. And then I have a yellow a butter potato, a um, what do you call them? South American potato, natural potato, butter potato, uh, Yukon potato. Uh, but it's a, it's a yellow potato with a, a light yellowish skin, and I've left the skin on. I put it in a strainer, I wrenched it, so I got all of the starch off of it. Uh, in some situations to where I would utilize that starch, I would take that starch and I would put it in a stew or a soup, so I would take the starch water from my potatoes and I would put it in my cook pot uh, if I'm making a soup or a stew. So this would be my cook pot and it will oxidize uh, but you know you can take that put it in your cooler throw some ice cubes in it so take your starch water throw some ice cubes in it and then by evening you're ready for your stew the unfortunate thing about that pot And that grate is that pot likes to tip, and that grate likes to tip. So I don't think I'll be keeping that one around for much longer. So the next is uh, cheese. This is choice or option. I do not use flavor additives like garlic powder and onion powder. 
uh, because of the fact of what it does to basically your odor. Um, even things like salt and pepper, I mean, pepper, if you have liver problems, uh, you'll be... Uh, You'll be told by a doctor not to use your black pepper because black pepper has, uh, actually blocks um, your liver from absorbing uh, or filtering um, salt. Uh, iodized salt is not good for you. Sea salt is actually better. Um, I just use it as a flavor enhancer, but you need minerals and things like that. So a mineral replacing. If you're backpacking and you're drinking out of streams and things like that and you've got a safe... Um, safe drinking location then you're getting the proper minerals you can actually tell the difference uh, the first time i went out in nature and drank water real water when i was a child when i would come home i would crave that water i mean i would literally crave that water so these ingredients were you know i mean this, this is store-bought cheese obviously and then i grated and chopped this up inside the house so i'm going to start with making my coffee so the first thing i'm going to do is clean up my dishes. That is my brand. Uh, the only reason why I use Folgers is because Maxwell House doesn't have the little individual serving packets for backpacking. So if you've seen my backpacking meal um, videos and things like that, I, I'm not sure if I still have those up or if I took them down. Uh, but just the individual serving packets. Um, is what I was looking at later on with my backpacking career what I ended up doing was taking or not necessarily a career but later on in life was I would just take a baggie like this and put my coffee in it and scoop out what I needed to scoop out so backpacking this would be my food pot uh, but inside this I would also carry a bag with my soap and my washcloth um, I actually did take a washcloth with me this was multi-use um, I did have wipes and things like that. I'll go into that a little later, but I have a little container. Uh, this is an e-juice container, a 30 mil or a 15 mil. I can't remember if it's a 15 or a 30 mil, but this has got bleach in it. And how I would wash dishes... They don't smell like bleach anymore. So how I would wash dishes that I would take a little bit of water, put hot water in this right here. Uh, of course, with my camp, I was always next to water. Um, so if I would eat, I would eat near a water source. Um, in some instances where I had to take it with me, I would carry the extra. So this, this whole situation would change. But sterilization was very important, so I made sure that I used bleach uh, with cleaning these two items, uh, or three items. Of course, my coffee cup. This would also get a nice little drop of bleach, and then I would cover it up and then shake it up and then do a rinse. So, on with washing dishes, I will actually do something in front of the camera, uh, which is something that I'm usually not used to doing. Uh, but, but mixing backpacking and things like that, of course, um, if my trip to Bulgaria does go through, uh, which usually things... When I do a lot of planning, I do a lot of talking about things that usually changes or usually doesn't happen. Um, but like I, I had said in the video prior, or before this, um, $1,700 will get you there. Uh, it won't get you back, uh, but it will get you there. Uh, a round trip ticket uh, will vary, but a one-way ticket, uh, they're running anywhere between six to $800. Uh, and of course, if you have frequent flyer, flyer stuff, then, you know, that, that changes things. So I don't use scented bleaches or anything like that, and I would put like a, maybe just a couple drops, a couple drops in bleach in order to do sterilization and sanitation. So in a situation to where you're in a pinch and you're near a creek or a stream or something like that, you know, um, you could use alcohol or you could do something like that, you know. Um, but the biggest problems with uh, backpacking and uh, getting sick and things of that nature is these right here. Uh, but more importantly, these right here. Now in Africa, they have, uh, how can I say, uh, they have a different way of doing things. So one hand is your dirty hand and one hand is your clean hand. Um, you don't offer your dirty hand in a handshake because this is the one that you use to clean yourself with. So this is your dirty hand. 
Uh, in the situations to where you're eating, you're eating with ease. You know, you're eating with your fingers, you're taking your food, uh, whether it be your right hand or your left hand, or your right hand and your left hand. Usually, the dominant hand is the clean hand, and the non-dominant is not. So, if you've ever uh, been around a lot of... Uh, African natives, uh, if you've ever lived around Spanish Lake or um, Spanish Lake apartment complex uh, towards St. Louis, Missouri, or you've been in North St. Louis where there's a high influctuation of uh, immigrants or college students uh, coming in from a foreign country, then you'll see there's a lot of different culture and a lot of different diversity that if you take the time to get to know them, you'll learn a lot of their culture as well as you'll pick up some of their language as well. Um, Backpacking, things like that, I would take something that big, uh, if need be, um, with dehydrated meals and whatnot. Uh, of course, something like this, you know, it takes time to dry, but do you actually need something that big for, for doing what you're doing? I mean, that's that's a pretty good, pretty big chunk of uh, Scotch-Brite pad. So... Versus using steel wool and other things like that, this this... I actually had a little chunk that was about that big that lasted me about a year, year and a half before it started fraying. But as long as you bleach it or you let it dry or you give it time to dry, you know, let your stuff sit out um, near the campfire or on a rock or something like that. You know, it, it, it's not that... It's not that difficult to keep yourself healthy while on trip. You know, it's actually easier because of the fact that, you know, you're exercising and whatnot. But you just, the, the things that you really have to pay attention to and you have to monitor uh, on trail are your own personal hygiene. Uh, when you go to the bathroom, how you go to the bathroom, there's a lot of people that basically take a, a water bottle And they'll run that water bottle down their back and they'll use their hand to clean themselves versus using toilet paper. So, in a situation where I just did a soap rinse, you know, I'll take my my materials out here, or my cleaning pads, and now that I've got the soap out, I've got clean rinse water. But then I can use that clean rinse water tomorrow. I can use that clean rinse water tomorrow for washing. Of course, I will have to oil this or laminate this, but I'm actually going to put another countertop. This is this is temporary. Of course, I'm saying this is temporary, and then, you know, six years down the road. Oh, yeah, I still haven't replaced that. Um, you know, bleaching things and, and keeping things hygienic um, are, are always a bonus or a plus. Uh, Bob, if you look up... Um, cheap RV living, he's got a lot of uh, tricks or hacks as the younger generation um, call them. Uh, of course, the van life isn't just necessarily a generational thing. Um, there's, It's been around. I mean, my parents, they lived or they stayed in a van. My father had a, a, a van, a Chevy, yeah, a Chevy van that had a little moonlight window on the back of it. You know, the old proverbial shag carpet. I don't I don't really have memories of it because of the fact that I was too young. But these type of coffee pots are a bit different than what you're used to. Um, some of the modern coffee pots, one scoop uh, in, a, in, in a percolator will um, provide the amount of coffee that you need. Uh, but this right here calls for one scoop uh, per cup. <laughs> so 
you actually use a lot of different coffee grounds, uh, a lot more coffee grounds with something like this uh, because of the way it's it's done. Uh, of course, basically the only reason why we drink coffee is, is for the caffeine. So, as it says on the, the scooper, if we can read that, Seven grams, 0 0.25 ounces per cup. So this is one cup of coffee, you know. I, I just kind of scratched my head with that, and I got to thinking, well, I've been making coffee all wrong. You know, my entire life I've been making coffee wrong. And then I got to thinking about the method that I'm using is a bit different than, you know, your coffee pot or your percolators. So this will go in an area out of heat coffee will oxidize and this is how I'm going to make my coffee. Of course I've been standing there talking so much that guess what happened? I evaporated all my water out of my frying pan. <laughs> so if you're sensitive to wasting resources, don't watch my video. I'm a little bit more sensitive to my resources and uh, not wasting so much um, when I'm not talking. So that's boiling water that I just put in there. So I'll actually tame that down here shortly. But you do have to kind of be careful about how or what kind of temperature that you put there. Uh, and of course you can do a, a wash or a... Um, I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a second. So I, I call it a washing the coffee grounds <laughs> you'll see what I'm talking about in a second of course we're not making uh, napalm for the mouth we're just we're just making coffee so in a frying pan your boil is going to happen a lot faster of course I'm using a one pound container over here so hopefully I can get breakfast done here, or I'll just do the coffee uh, in an early morning introduction, and then I'll set up um, for breakfast, and then I'll just do the breakfast video separate, and then I'll show you the ingredients again. So uh, it'll, get, it'll, it'll give you time to watch this video, get everything together, get your coffee going, and then just kind of move on from there. And then I'm going to let that drain, and then I'm going to do something rather strange here. Now, usually I'll use that to fill this up. And the way I put this together, this is my tea container, uh, but this is uh, stainless steel insulated. It's uh, kind of a zen thing. So if you've ever been there, you'll understand what that sound is and what that sound is used for, uh, especially what they use um, in that country to make that sound. Since I love being complicated about things, now there is a... How can I say? There's a bit of silt that you find at the bottom of this after making coffee. I mean, there's just little fine particles down there. Not sure if you'll be able to see them or not, but it's 
So that gives me a nice cup of coffee. But then what I'm going to do, hopefully I can keep from spilling. I'm going to rinse down the side of my strainer. And of course I have the reusable strainer, I don't have the paper stuff. So the more, the more I follow uh, this whole uh, vehicle traveling lifestyle uh, that I'm creating for myself, um, the more I'll start, how can I say, um, finding things that work for me, you know. Uh, for instance, like for instance beekeeping, there's a lot of people that are saying, I didn't read that in that paragraph, what paragraph do you find that, what book was that, you know, and then you're kind of going, well I didn't learn that from a book. <laughs> And they're like, well, who taught you that? And you're like, well, I learned it for myself, you know. And then they get all offended saying, well, you know, what makes you think you're an expert? And blah, this, blah, that. And then you're kind of like, well, I studied beekeeping for about five or six years. Well, you've never gotten any actually experience. Well, I've, I've had several colonies for over four years, five years, possibly six years. <laughs> I, I've, I've worked in, in apiaries. People, people used to pay me to tend their bees and help them during honey season <laughs> you know and then they're then they're like oh i don't like your tone and you know these internet bullshit oh so if you're wondering what that was um that was a big yellow european bee The, um, the hornets and the wasps kind of like my step band for some reason. So backpacking and things like that, uh, this isn't a reality. This is this is a home thing. Um, you know, this is, this is something that I will do. Car camping, uh, things like that, uh, just regular camping, yeah, it's not something that I would take with me. Um, I actually have, um, Mr. Coffee Pot, which is, um, it's a percolator. So the, the percolator jokes, um, yeah. Not a big fan of them. Uh, I would explain that to you, but, you know, I don't want to be biased against people, but... Some people, you know. Uh, but, you know, we, we gotta... How can I say? We, we have to take things for a grain of salt, take things for a stride, you know. it's In, in some instances, if you can't respect somebody else's wishes, just, just walk away from them, just leave them alone, you know. And if, if you're on the, the internet or the interweb or... If, if you're uh, an electronic spider, um, block people. You know, I, I've got some family members saying no one will ever be deleted, no one will be ever be blocked, you know. And, and I'm kind of like, yeah, um, that honor is going to get you someday. Or, you know, that honor might not get you someday. So, the next thing I'm going to do, uh, while my coffee's brewing, I'm going to go ahead and scratch out the salt or the hot water or the hard water deposits out of my pan which that's well water and that's what well water looks like when you boil it so we've got uh, we got minerals in our well water and we've got slip which basically what the slip is is if you take a look at this paper towel you see the center here uh, this is where the water is, and the water coming in from the rock and the, everything from the outside goes through the slip and uh, stays in that cavity. So it's kind of like a natural filter that's pressed uh, into the wall. Um, but unfortunately that gets into our kidneys and things like that and can, can actually uh, wreak some havoc. Um, things of that nature. So, uh, we're 24 minutes in the first video. I do believe that I'm going to shut up and do a video three for this morning so it'll be a video two um, so by that time my my coffee should be cooled down enough to where that right there is going to turn into two of those cups um, 
And of course I'm using Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is local Missouri honey. I did not buy this. Uh, this was grown, or that was produced right here in my apiary. Yes, I am an asshole for stealing from my bees, but I take care of my bees. Uh, my honeybees are, are pampered little things. Um, I don't use chemicals in my bees. Uh, I don't... Um, how can I say? I don't kill thousands or hundreds of honeybees every morning when I do inspections. Actually, I haven't been in, or I haven't broken down and done a full inspection in my beehive since I pulled my honey supers about two months ago, a um, month and a half ago. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is going to be my breakfast run. Um, when I turn the camera on, we'll have we'll have the coffee set up, and um, I will start on uh, my um, my breakfast. Um, I'm not sure if I have an actual name for it, but it's hash browns beans. Um, it's not necessarily a loaded loaded hash browns or anything like that, but um, I'll get the camera turned back on. Of course, I have my back door open, and you don't see any bugs in here, so we're we're going good right now. I don't have a screen up just yet, um, and I'm not 100% done with my stat van, um, but um, I am moving forward with things. <laughs> I have improved some. So uh, we'll see you with the next video.